All right then gang, so this is starting to take shape and now we have a pretty nice offline experience, right? We can visit the homepage and see all these different pictures and the different content. And we can also go to different pages as well while we're offline. And we can do that because we cached those pages when the user visited them while they were online. However, there's still another problem. What if the user tries to navigate to a page offline that they've never been to before? So they've never been to the page while they're online and they're trying to access it while they're offline now. Now this isn't going to work because if they've never been to it online, then we're never going to get the opportunity to cache that page, right? So if they try to visit it offline, we're not going to be able to show that page. So what I've done is already deleted from the site dynamic cache, the contact page. So we don't have that stored in the cache anymore. And I did that by the way, by selecting it and going to the cross to delete that item. Now then, if I try to visit contact now, since we don't have it cached, it looks like this. We get this horrible error. And this is not a good user experience. It just looks like our apps crashed or something like that. Now, it would be much nicer to be able to show the user some kind of fallback page when a resource is not retrievable. So in this case, it would still show the actual application with the menu, the design, and then a little message in the middle that says something like, sorry, you can't view this page offline. That would be a better experience because it still looks like they're in the application and we don't get this horrible message. So that's what we're gonna try and do. First of all, I'm gonna go to pages and create this fallback page and we'll call this fallback HTML. And all I'm going to do, because I'm super lazy, is copy all of the contact page, paste it inside here, and the content will change. I'm going to give this div a class of center as well to centrally align all the text, then an h5 inside that, and we'll say oops, and then underneath that a p tag, and in the p tag we'll say currently you cannot view this page offline. Okay. And then underneath that, we'll do an anchor tag. We'll give this an href a forward slash to go to the home page. maybe a few classes as well to make it look like a button. So BTN and then small, and we'll color this orange as well. And then inside we'll say, go to home page, just to take them back to the start of the application. Okay, so we have this fallback page now. What we need to do is cache this page inside our static assets cache, because we always want this here. It always needs to be available to us offline because if they can't access a different page, we're going to show this one as a fallback. So inside service worker, let's go up to where we cache the assets and I'm going to add it to this dude over here. So it's going to be forward slash pages because it's in the pages folder, then fallback.html. So now we need to reactivate the service worker and then that's going to cache this asset when it reactivates or rather when it reinstalls because all this happens over here, the caching of these shell assets. Okay, so we'll do that in a second. But first of all, we need to go down to this thing right here, the fetch handler, and we need to be able to configure this so it serves up the fallback page when it cannot fetch the resource from our cache or from online if there's no connection. So then currently, imagine we're offline, right? And we try to fetch a new page, then it's going to run this fetch handler. First of all, it's going to look inside our cache to see if we have that resource already stored. Now, if we do, then great, it's going to return that resource. Say, for example, that's the about page. Okay, now if we don't have that, instead, it's going to carry on and it's going to try to fetch that resource from the server. Now, we're offline at this point, so this is going to fail. Now, since this returns a promise, and we're returning that promise right here. It means that this right here also returns that promise. So we can tack on a catch method right here to catch the error if this fetch fails. So we don't have the page in our cache and the fetch has failed because we're offline. So at this point, this is the point where we can actually serve up the fallback page instead. So we'll catch the error. We don't need to pass it into the callback function because we won't use it. Instead, all we're gonna do is return something here. And we're gonna return caches dot match and inside the cache we're going to look for forward slash pages forward slash fallback dot html which we should have now because we pre-cached it before up there at the top so if now i save this in fact there's one more thing i need to do and i'll show you that in a second let me save this and go over here i'm going to go online 
So go to network, uncheck that, then go to application and we'll refresh over here. Now, if we go to service workers, we need to activate this. Before I do this, notice inside site dynamic, we have these two pages at the minute, right? They're in our site dynamic cache. Now I'm going to go back to service workers and I'm going to skip waiting. So notice site dynamic just got deleted. Now, why is that? That is because remember when we activate a new service worker, this event fires, and this is where we're trying to delete the old caches, right? And any cache, which doesn't have a name equal to this name, site static v2 at the moment, they get deleted. So the dynamic cache got deleted. Now we don't want to do that. We only want to delete old cache names, right? We don't want to delete just different caches, only old versions. So what we need to do is make sure at this point that the key is not equal to this, but also that it's not equal to this thing right here. So, let me now say double ampersand to check this as well. So they both have to be satisfied and key is not double equal to dynamic cache. And I think it's just dynamic cache, but we'll change this to dynamic cache name to keep them consistent. So dynamic cache name. And we also need to update this down here, dynamic cache name. Okay, so let's save that now and hopefully We'll get that dynamic cache back. We do. Let me skip waiting and refresh. Okay, so let me look inside this dynamic cache. Currently, we have the contact page on there, but we don't have the about page. But I won't go to that. I'll just go to the home page. And now, what I'm going to do is first of all refresh. Then I'm going to go to service workers and go offline. Now, if I refresh again, I get this page. I also should get the about page. No, I don't. Let me go to site dynamic. It's because we have the contact page. So I should get the contact page, but I don't get the about page. Instead, I get this fallback page, but this is a much, much better user experience than going to that default Google Chrome error that looks like the app is broken or something like that. So now if we ever try to access any kind of resource offline that we don't have in the cache, we'll get this back instead of the default browser error.